So options for race directors to watch the shark bite feed. Uh, th this can be a big issue at bigger events um, where it's standard practice to record all of the pilots and be able to watch them and see if they're making any mistakes. Here's a few options for how you can do that. Uh, you can get a second VRX and an HDMI capture device. That would be like the best case. That way you just set up a uh, video, shark bite video receiver and an HDMI capture card and route that into the DVR system using OBS. And that's how you get the best looking feed. And I have some example video of what that looks like. Another option would be a second VRX and a portable monitor. Uh, you can get an HDMI splitter box if you don't want to have a second video receiver. And I've done that uh, myself a number of times and it works all right. It basically turns it into a ground station. You can do HDMI to analog uh, to capture the HDMI feed into an analog signal and then send the analog signal uh, over a coax, uh, RCA coax, uh, into an existing analog DVR box. I've also done this and I have some example video of that and it works great. Uh, the downside is it looks kind of crummy because it's literally analog at that point. So to recap, here's the HDMI to analog converter option. Here's a HDMI splitter box. So take the HDMI output from VRX and then split it off to two HDMI sources, one being your goggles and one being the uh, HDMI capture device. Another option that you have if you're uh, a bigger outfit is to get this uh, four by HDMI PCI Express capture card. This can be one of the best ways to go if you have enough money to spend. And we do have this at our local club and it works very well. They range anywhere from uh, three to $500, depending on which one you get and whether you get it used. The cost breakdown of different options available. And it ranges anywhere from 30 to 40 bucks, all the way up to uh, $350 per uh, channel per, per pilot that you're recording. Uh, so on the low end, we've got uh, going analog to HDMI, um, getting a and, and using a HDMI splitter box, um, and the required adapters to do that. Uh, so that'll bring out the total cost to thirty three dollars. You know, add in a little bit here and there. Uh, so th that's a pretty good starting point if you're okay with having a splitter. If you're not okay with having a splitter, uh, then we can drop the splitter, but we have to. Add in getting a the in getting a second shark bite VRX, so that brings the total up to about 270. Um, if you want to go at the full HD route rather than doing the analog route for the input into the DVR system, then we're looking at uh, 38 dollars on the low end. If you're again okay using a splitter, uh, HDMI splitter. And if you're not going to do a splitter, then it's about 275. Um, and then going all the way up to the high end, um, you're going to have to get this uh, PCI Express 4x HDMI um, capture device and then uh, getting a, a shark bite for each one of those inputs. And that comes out to about 350 per pilot when you spread the cost around. We do have that at the club. Works really well, um, obviously. That's a bit of a luxury. So here's the options that you have. I hope this is helpful. Uh, it is pretty great being able to incorporate analog and digital feeds all together. And I'll also say, uh, Jeff, the guy at the club who put this all together for our DVR box did a great job. And he's got it also working with uh, DJI feed where we can feed in uh, DJI over uh, the USB uh, video out and do shark bite in the various flavors that I just described and do analog all at the same time. Plus we have a uh, live FPV feed uh, or overlay on top of that showing the positions of pilots. Works pretty well. Well, with that, I'm out.